Right. There are two categories of entrepreneur. We've got commercial entrepreneurs and agricultural entrepreneurs. We separate these entrepreneurs because some laws apply to one category and others to another. We do have laws which apply to both categories, but for example, um, the law of failing, a uh, failing activity only applies to the commercial on entrepreneurs. Uh, an agricultural entrepreneur cannot fail. Or for example, registering in the registry of uh, activity only applies to the commercial entrepreneurs. Uh, those agricultural ones don't have to register. Generally, the, 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 the laws protect much more and much more advantageous towards agricultural entrepreneurs. Um, this is because uh, it's important always for a, a nation to protect its food production because the, the people depend for their security, their life, the security of their lives on being able to eat. Uh, so most countries protect their agricultural sector. Um, if, for example, farms could fail and those farms could turn into wild woods and you know trees and we can't produce because we're, we're importing lots of cheap food from Africa, um, that means Africa would have a lot of power over, over Italy. Um, they would be able to have sanctions uh, on Italy that really hurt. Uh, maybe they would put the price of food up. It's not so easy when you stop an industry to return to that industry. We would lose farmers, eventually would do other activities. We would lose the competence of producing our own food. And that would mean we would depend heavily on this very, very important sector. So we protect uh, agriculture like most countries. And we have different laws for the two different types of entrepreneur for that good reason. Um, okay, so we've got these two entrepreneurs, commercial and agriculture. Agricultural. Now to define a commercial entrepreneur, we can look at Article 2195, which tries to show which, which activity should be registered in the Registrar dell'Impresa. We know that uh, only commercial activities should, so this should define for us what a commercial activity and anything else is a, an agricultural activity. It says, the following subjects have the obligation to register in the Registrar dell'Impresa. So these are commercial activities. Firstly, can be an industrial activity which produces goods or services. So any activity which turns the raw materials into products, into goods or services, uh, is considered as a commercial activity. Even though it's called industrial, it's commercial activity. Remember, commercial law, the definition of commer commercial law, predates the industrial era. So all industrial activity is defined as commercial activity. Um, second category, an activity involved in the circulation of goods. So we can think of shops or maybe representatives that just sell and distribute products. These are commercial activity. They're involved in the circulation of goods. An activity which transports by road, sea or air. So here we can see, you know, uh, any, we can think of um, any of these transportation services, any postal services, any services which ship goods can be a commercial activity. 
or the next a banking or insurance activity. So all the financial and insurance industry is considered a commercial activity. And finally, any other activities which support the previous activities. Here you can have training, you know, maybe businesses that want to learn English, maybe, uh, I don't know, the, 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 an activity which transports maybe needs operators that know English and so need English teachers. This is an activity which supports or maybe they need to lease equipment, machines or, or vans to the other activities. So they are also commercial activities. So you've got, we've got these pictures and we can choose the pictures to fit the category here. The first one, I think we can all agree they're transforming uh, a product that they're, they're transforming uh, a raw material into a product. So that's an industrial activity. Uh, here we've got a transport activity. They're shipping containers full of products. Uh, here we could maybe a uh, support activity. Maybe he's teaching these members of staff, these, these workers, something to improve the, the business. So that's uh, the final activity, the activity which supports the other categories. Or you've got the banking sector here in this picture. And then finally, we've got uh, the circulation of goods. It could be a shop. So these are all commercial activities. Anything else is considered an agricultural activity. Now you've got the statute of the of the companies of the businesses. The commercial entrepreneur must uh, respect this statute. Of the agricultural uh, activities entrepreneurs don't, and in that statute, of, we can see the subject they are subject to failure. So these commercial activities can fail. Obviously, if they're producing something and no one wants what they're producing, or maybe they're not competitive enough and they can't sell their product, you know, they still have debt. And so they will fail if they've got debt and they've got costs uh, and they're not able to produce and to sell competitively, they will fail. And that means they have to go through a process, uh, they have to go to court and the creditors uh, want their money back. Obviously, they could pay the money back without going to court, but often it ends in court. So they're subject to failure. Uh, the agricultural entrepreneurs don't have this possibility. You've got the obligation to register in the Registro de la Empresa. Uh, this is important so everything is public. All the creditors or possible creditors future creditors can see you know what the business owes what its profits are how it's doing what activity it does and can judge it and maybe think do i want to invest and lend this activity money so you've got to be everything needs to be public in this register um, you've got the obligation to keep written accounts and these must be kept in the register too but there's this obligation in the statute of, uh, to keep written accounts, to, to show all the assets and the, the liabilities of the business, uh, the profit or the loss, the costs, etc. All the normal uh, accounts, written accounts for a business. And lastly, you've got your subject to the norms for representation, the obligations for representation. Uh, this means uh, every business needs to be represented by someone who signs contracts and, and maybe represents the company in court if they're accused of something and need to be defended, uh, they need a representative. But the obligations for that needs to be 
the normal obligations, which are that they can act in law. They have the capacità um, di agire. So they're not underage, they're not under 18, they're not considered a minor, or maybe they're not in prison, etc. So there might be other obligations. Um, and this institute, it, it, it states they are the commercial activities are subject to these obligations in their representations.